All right, so we'll start with a fairly simple example here where we want to show that the limit as x approaches 1 of this function here is infinity. From the plot, it's pretty clear, right? We can see this vertical asymptote. We can see the y values shooting off to infinity, right? The graph is going up, right? Um, so it looks pretty obvious, right? Uh, we can see by looking at the function, looking at the expression that defines the function, that if we try to do a direct substitution, we do have this division by zero going on, right? And this is not like the sort of uh, indeterminate forms that, they that we looked at before, where we had zero divided by zero. Here we would have one divided by zero, right? So the numbers that we're dividing by are getting smaller and smaller and smaller while the numerator is remaining unchanged, right? And so that means the overall thing is getting much bigger, right? And so if we wanted to kind of think about this numerically, right, if, uh, if we said, okay, well, let's think about x equals, you know, you know, say 1.1, right, then, well, f of x is going to be what? It's going to be 1 over 0 0.1 squared. So 1 over 0 0.001. So 1 over 100, right? If x is 1.01, f of x is going to be 1 over 0 0.01 squared, right? So 1 over 100 squared, one, well, one over, 1 over 100 squared, so 100 squared, we get 10,000, and so on, right? Um, 0 0.001, we're going to get, you know, what, a million. Uh, and so, so we, as, as we get closer and closer to 1, we can see that the function is going to get bigger and bigger and bigger, right? In fact, I can get, you know, um, I can make this bigger than any power of 10 just by, you know, adding enough zeros after the decimal, right? And that's essentially the argument that you make in, in the precise definition, right? So if somebody says, you know, I want f of x to be bigger than 10,000, I say, fine, take a delta that's, you know, equal to 0 0.01, right? If somebody says, I want f of x to be bigger than a million, I say, okay, we'll take a delta to be 0 0.001, and so on, right? And so in general, um, the way we see this is we'd say, okay, if somebody gave me um, some n, so we, we're given this n bigger than zero, and We want f of x, which is 1 over x minus 1 squared. We want that to be bigger than n. Okay? Everything's positive here, so this is the same thing as saying x minus 1 squared should be smaller than 1 over n. Uh, and again, because everything is positive, that's the same thing as saying that x minus 1, ah, well, I guess x minus 1 itself might not be positive, so in absolute value um, has to be less than 1 over the square root of n. But, aha, this should look familiar, right? We found, we found our delta, right? So, I won't write up the formal proof, but you can see how this is going to go. If I wanted to convince you that this limit is infinity, I'm going to say, all right, let this n be given. Let's choose delta to be 1 over the square root of n. We're going to assume that x minus 1 in absolute value is smaller than delta. We reverse the steps. We find that our function is bigger than n, and we're done.